This week, we're on location in Bainbridge, Georgia, the new home of Taurus. For decades, Taurus has been located in Miami, Florida, but the need for expansion and more manufacturing capacity led them to build this new facility. Let's go inside and take a look at what they've got. So Taurus as a group was based out of Brazil, we still are. And in the early 80s, they decided that they were gonna shift their focus solely onto the US market. And to do that, we needed a, a presence here in the United States. And they chose Miami, Florida to be their headquarters at that time. So in 1982, they opened up their facility there in Miami. When we were headquartered in Miami, we kind of outgrew our space and there wasn't the opportunity to expand. The time came where we needed to take our next step and the decision to move out of South Florida actually happened about eight years before we actually finally made the move. So this was a long time in the making. We looked at a lot of different areas uh, outside of Georgia and also within Georgia and really took our time to make the best decision for the company and that was Bainbridge. It was not a, an existing facility, it was ground up where we had a lot of help in. And so we got to help influence what we actually needed. We knew, you know, the end goal, what was it? U.S. manufacturing. So this building is really built around the efficiency. Whenever you get the efficiency right, guns cost less, <laughs> right? And uh, everything comes a little easier, a little less stressful for you in the long run. So when you look at the layout of the entire facility, where the machines are placed, where the shipping facility is, all that stuff was all, you know, help chose by us. And so that was a big key part of moving from Miami to Bainbridge was having the space and the ability to build this place from the ground up as what we wanted. We had to plan out the shifting of certain business units like our customer service, some of the machinery, all the inventory, um, and then decide, you know, what employees were going to come with us. So we spent a lot of time bringing employees from Miami along with their families up to Bainbridge so they could see the area, kind of see what they were looking at if they decided to move here. And ultimately everyone had the opportunity to move up here and we ended up bringing about 75 employees with us, which was a great thing for us. Currently in Bainbridge, we are making our TX-22 product line, uh, basically start to finish. Uh, we are also doing the assembly on the GX-4 with components coming from our factory down in Brazil. Uh, we're doing some assembly in the G-Series with the G-3C, same concept as the GX-4 where our parts are coming from Brazil. And then we're also building a little bit of the Spectrum and then our full heritage line is made start to finish here in this building. In addition to our assembly processes, we also do parts manufacturing. So we have our own uh, metal injection molding or MIM facility here, which is rare for a firearm company to do in-house. We also make our own barrels here for a lot of our Heritage and TX-22 product. We're bringing in more machining capabilities, so we'll be making our own slides here. And then uh, on top of that, the parts finishing is an important aspect. So we do our own bluing here as well as Cerakote. Taurus is really a brand, if you look at across a lot of new shooters, they usually start off with Taurus. You know, and you look at your lineup of guns and what, what you rely on from a defensive standpoint, you usually have a home defense gun, you usually have a concealed carry gun, sometimes one for the winter time when you have a coat, sometimes a smaller one when it's hot outside. You look at what you carry when you go hiking or in bear country if you're a hunter. You look at it from what Taurus makes, they literally make a gun that's great at every one of those features and it's at a price point that you can afford. One of the challenges in the move was our warranty repair process because we had customer guns that needed to be worked on and we had to move them up to Bainbridge because we were closing the facility down in Miami. Um, so through that move, there was a little bit of disorganization within that department and we had to work through a large inventory of customer guns and get those guns back to the consumers who were waiting for them. Right after the move, our average turnaround time was right around six months for warranty repair, which for us is unacceptable. Uh, we were able to process through all those guns and it took about a year, improve our processes internally, and today we're averaging between one and two days turnaround time. Uh, for warranty repair. The R&D process, when we're taking the concept all the way to the market, is a long, thorough process. 
So there's this design process that happens, a lot of collaboration between engineers, product managers, myself, uh, to make sure that we're designing what the market wants. And then you go through a prototyping phase, and that's always kind of fun because it's the first hands-on experience with that gun. And ultimately, you hope it goes well, uh, but you know, if your calculations are off or, or something, you might have some challenges to overcome. Maybe you're designing the parts to be manufactured efficiently or properly, and that's a big part that kind of goes unnoticed. You're not just designing the gun, you're designing how to make the parts that make the gun. And then uh, from there, you have to figure out how to get it into production. And early on in the production, you might do a pilot run, uh, build a thousand guns or a hundred guns or whatever's appropriate. And then you're gonna go through a validation test. And so that's where you're typically gonna have endurance testing. You're gonna wanna test through a wide range of ammunition. You'll do your drop testing, uh, any kind of adverse conditions testing if it's appropriate for the gun. You really wanna make sure at that point that you're getting the right product to the market. And that's where all of our executive team has to sign off on the design and the testing before we can actually go into full production. If people know what they're supposed to do and they're communicated to correctly and they love what they do, like your products normally come out really great. <laughs> you know, when you look at that across any industry. And, and I think that's an approach that we've really taken. So we've got literally daily walkthroughs and meetings with the correct communication where everybody knows what they're doing. If you plan for the next day, you, you know, hopefully your next day will go as to plan, right? Everything is quality checked thoroughly before it ever makes it towards the assembly line. We want to make sure that we don't ever introduce parts that aren't within spec onto the assembly line. That's the first step. Once the firearm is fully assembled, it's going to go through a series of quality checks that are going to go into test the sear engagement, uh, trigger pull weight, the slide to frame fit. Uh, a lot of this is now automated, so we have robotics that are doing the quality checks as well as the operator who is finalizing the assembly. And then from there, it's gonna go through a test fire. Um, and for us, that means if it's a semi-automatic pistol, a full magazine is gonna get fired through that gun. And if it's a revolver, a full cylinder of the appropriate ammunition is gonna be fired through the gun. When you look at a firearms company, giving people the experiences and the capabilities that they need to go experience what you make, because it comes out in your products later. And so, like I said, you, you've seen the outdoor range, you, you've seen the facilities and what that is and the culture around the town. I think you'll see that kind of start stemming in the, in the products in the future, you know, because I think when people get out and get to use your stuff and, and see it, the ideas flow so much better as a company. Bainbridge here, it's a very Second Amendment friendly area. Uh, most of our employees are what we call end users. They either carry a gun or they like to shoot on the weekends. They're all involved in the Second Amendment community. And ultimately, I want people to be excited about the product that we're making here. And I think we've achieved that. <laughs>